Hello everyone, welcome to our class. My name is Ko Chen Li. In today's sections, we will talk about hardware error detections and recovery part one. This is today's outline. We will show introductions of hardware error detections and then talk about how to spot hardware changes. In the last, we will discuss the errors while installing devices. We will use Windows Server 2008 as an example to show you how to detect hardware errors. And most servers that you will work with will have different hardware components. This means different servers will probably have different motherboards disk controllers, graphic cards, and network adapters. Windows Server 2008 is designed to work with an extensive list of hardware devices. When you install new hardware, Windows tries to, to defeat the device automatically and then install the correct driver software so that you can use the device. If Windows has a problem with a device, you must troubleshoot the installation, which usually means finding the correct device drivers for the hardware components and installing them. And one thing to keep in mind when working with devices is that, like other software, driver software can contain bugs. And these bugs can cause a variety of problems on your servers. And not only could the hardware stop working, but the server could freeze as well. And because of this, you will want to monitor routinely for hardware problems and take corrective actions as necessary. And it is also helpful to maintain a hardware inventory for servers so that you know which devices are installed and who the manufacturers are. And internal hardware devices are devices you install inside your computer. Typically, you will need to power down and unplug your computer and then remove the computer case before you can install an internal device. Also, many workgroup and enterprise class server systems continue to use the serial attached SCSI devices. Servers are always built using such robust server systems. Increasingly, for general use, desktop class computers are being configured with server operating systems, and most of these computers use internal devices with enhanced integrated driver electronic EIDE or serial ATA. EIDE, also called parallel ATA, PATA. Devices have been used for many years with desktop class computers. Also, EIDE is still in use as of the time this book was written. You might find that most newer computers use serial ATA devices instead. Because serial ATA cables are significantly smaller than EIDE cables, this results in less clutter inside your computer and improved airflow for better cooling. With EIDE and serial ATA, there are some future differences. Typical EIDE devices support a maximum data transfer rate of 100 megabits per second and allow two devices to be connected per cable. On the other hand, typical serial ATA devices have a maximum data transfer rate of 150 or 300 megabits per second 
and allow you to connect only one device per cable. Also, Windows Server 2008 can be used with the SCSI, EIDE, and Serial ATA hardware devices. Your computer must be configured specifically to work with these devices. And external hardware devices are devices you connect to your computer. Because you don't have to open your computer's case to connect external devices, you typically don't need to power down or unplug your computer before installing an external, external device. This makes external devices easier to install. And most current computers use external devices with USB, firewall, external serial ATA, or a combination of these interfaces. An example of each interface is shown in the following illustrations. A USB 2.0 is the industry standard peripheral connections for most Windows-based computers. And this connection transfers data at a maximum rate of 480 megabits per second with substand data transfer rate usually from 10 to 30 megabits per second. The actual substandable transfer rate depends on many factors, including the type of device, the data you are transferring, and the speed of your computer. And each USB controller on your computer has a fixed amount of bandwidth which all devices attached to the controller must share. And if your computer's USB port is an earlier version, USB 1.0 or 1.1, and you can use USB 2.0 devices, but the transfer rates will be significantly slower. And now USB 2.0 update to USB 3.0. A firewall, also called IEEE 1394, is a high-performance connection standard for most Windows, Windows-based computers. And this interface uses a peer-to-peer -peer architecture in which peripherals negotiate bus conflicts to determine which device can be best control a data transfer and Firewall has, has several configurations, including Firewall 400 and Firewall 800. And Firewall 400, also called IEEE 1394A, has maximum substantive transfer rates of up to 400 megabit per second. And Firewall 800, also called IEEE 1390-94B, has maximum substant transfer rates of up to 800 megabits per second. An E-Serial ATA is an ultra high performance connection standard. Primarily used with high performance external devices. And with external hard drives, ES ATA provides a secure, reliable, an ultra fast connection. E series ATA has maximum substantive transfer rates of up to 3000 megabits per second. And it is important to note that there are several types of external serial ATA connector and cables, and that E serial ATA and the in internal serial ATA cables and connectors cannot be used interchangeably. And also Windows Server 2008 can be used with both USB and firewall hardware devices. And your components must be configured specifically to work with these devices. To support USB 2.0, a computer needs a 
USB 2.0 controller card. To support FileWire, a computer needs a FileWire controller card. When working with a USB, there are some important things to know. First of all, USB 1.0, 1.1, and 2.0 ports all look very similar. For your computer, the best way to determine which types of USB ports are available is to re refer to the documentation that came with your computer. And this documentation should list the types of USB ports and their locations. And there are several different types of USB connectors. For devices that use connector cards, the USB 1.1, 1.0, 1 1.1 connector typically is U-shaped, while the USB 2.0 connectors typically is a smaller and looks like a, a chubby later. T. When working with a FileWire, keep in mind that FileWire ports and the cables have different shapes and connectors, making it easy to tell the different differences between them. If you know that, what you are looking for. If you look closely at the standard FileWire cables and ports, and you will see four pins and four connectors. If you look closely at FileWire 400 cables and ports, and you will see six pins and six or six connectors. Although standard FileWire and FileWire 400 cables have rectangular shape connectors with one short flat end and the other is rounded. FileWire 800 cables are square with one of, one of the long size having a notch. When you are purchasing external devices, you might want to get a device with dual or triple interfaces. A device with dual or triple interfaces will give you more configuration options. And most devices with dual interfaces suppose USB 2.0 and FileWire 400. And where a device with a triple interfaces might support USB 2.0, FileWire 400, and FileWire 800. And some have all of the previously mentioned interfaces as well as, as, well as, as an external serial ATA interface. And every hardware component installed on a system has an associated device driver. When you install a hardware component through the operating system, you tell the operating system about the device driver it uses. If a device wasn't installed because Windows Server 2008 didn't include the drivers, the built-in hardware diagnostics will, in many cases, detect the hardware and then use the automatic update framework to retrieve the required driver the next time the Windows update run runs. Provides that the Windows update is enabled and you allow driver updating as well as operating system updating. And after updating or installing the operating system, you should check for driver updates and apply them as appropriate before trying other techniques to install device drivers. And Windows Update Driver settings control whether Windows Server 2008 checks for drivers automatically. To install available device driver updates, follow these steps. Windows Update. In Windows Update, click View Available Updates and you can review the available updates. Check Install to download and install the selected updated. After you have installed the device driver, 
Windows Server 2008 should both detect the hardware within several minutes and install the device automatically. If Windows Server 2008 detects the device but isn't able to install the device automatically, the Windows Server 2008 starts the driver software installation component, which in turn starts the found new hardware wizards. And after you install or connect a new hardware device, you must set up the device so that it is available for use. And most available new devices are plug and play compatible. Windows Server 2008 plug and play is optimized to support USB firewall, personal computer memory card interface, association, PC MCIA, or PC card. Peripheral components interface PCI or interconnect and PCI Express devices. Windows Server 2008 provides part up balloon tips in a notification area that tell you about the major steps in the plug and play installation process, such as device detections and finalization. For example, when installing a new disk drive, Windows Server 2008 might display found new hardware disk drive as shown in the following screen. Then a broom message is displayed to tell you that your new hardware is installed and ready to use as shown in the following screen. Then sometimes the Windows operating system will warn you about something that you might need to take action to correct. And one of the more common warnings you will see in the related is related to your to you connecting high-speed USB devices to non-high-speed USB ports, as shown in the following screen. And this is important because if you are connecting an external hard disk drive or other high-speed USB device. The device won't operate at their rated speed. It will in fact operate at a much slower speed. You might also want to consider adding a PCI expansion card because of plug and play. And you should be able to install the new devices easily by using one of the following techniques. For a non-USB or non-firewall device, simply shut down the computer, insert the card into the appropriate slot, or connect the device to the computer, and restart the computer. And then let Windows Server 2008 automatically detect the new device. And for USB or firewall device, simply insert the device into the appropriate slots or connect it to the computer. Restart the computer and then let Windows Server 2008 automatically detect the new device. The success of an automatic detection and installation depends on the device being plug and play compatible and a device driver being available. When Windows Server 2008 includes many device drivers in a standard installation. And in this case, it should install the device automatically. If Windows Server 2008 detects a plug and play device, after you have, been, you have connected it, but cannot locate a suitable driver, it displays a warning that a problem occurred during installations, as shown in the following screens. And sometimes, when this happens, you must install the hardware device manually as you do with the non plug and play devices. And more typically, Windows Server 2008 starts the driver software installation components, 
which in turn starts the found new highway wizard. And after you have successfully installed the device, you will need to perform maintenance tasks period periodically for the device and its drivers. You might then want to install the updated drivers on computers that use this device. And on the server operating systems, you can implement the driver update procedures as follows. First, click the device and driver information on each system prior to installing the new driver. Note the locations, versions, and file names of the existing driver. And second, install the updated drivers and reboot the computer. If the computer and the device function normally after the reboot, consider the update as a success. And third, if the computer or device malfunctions after the driver install installations and roll back to the previously installed driver using the standard device manager utilities. And if you cannot restart the computers and restore the drivers, and you might need you might need to start the computer in safe mode and use the stopped up repair to restore the systems. And you use the device manager to view and configure hardware devices. And you will spend a lot of time working with this tool. So you should get to know it before work, working with devices. Figure shows use, figure show use device manager to work with hardware devices. And after you access device managers, and you can work with any of the installed devices. The av available options depends on the device type, but they include the following properties. Displays the property dialog box for the device, uninstalled, uninstall the device and its drivers, disable, disable the device but doesn't uninstall it, enable, enables the di device if it isn't in in disabled, and update driver software, start a hardware update wizard which you can use to update a device driver. Scan for hardware changes. Tells Windows Server 2008 to check the hardware configuration and determine whether there are any changes. The device list shows warning symbols if there are problems with the, with the device. A year warning symbols with a Exclamation point indicates a problem with the device. A red X indicates a device that was improperly installed or disabled by the users or the administrators for some reason. And you can use the options on the view menu in Server Manager to change the defaults for which type of devices are displayed and how the devices are list, listed. The options are as follows. Devices by type. Display devices by the type of device installed, such as disk drive or printer. Devices by connections. Display devices by connection type such as audio and video codecs. Resources by type. Display the status of allocated resources by type of device using the resources. And resources by connections. Display the status of all allocated resources by connection type rather than device type and show hidden devices. Display non-plug-and-play devices 
as well as devices that have been physically removed from the computer, but hasn't had their driver uninstalled it. And you can use a computer management to view and work with settings on remote computers. If you want detailed driver lists for multiple computers, and you can do this using driver query command line utility.